welcome to another edition of Spilling the Tea. Hope you're having a, uh, a great week, and I hope and pray that your Lenten journey is uh, deepening um, in you a sense of intimacy with our Lord. You know, uh, in the, th- these last few days, I've um, tried to make the time to walk down to uh, Cold Pit Lake. It's only about a 10 or 12 minute walk down this beautiful trail from, uh, from the church. And um, I've really enjoyed praying the rosary down there. I was very consoled yesterday in, in praying with the, uh, the mystery of the resurrection and uh, just contemplating the, uh, the gift of faith. And so um, let us um, continue to, um, to deepen in our faith. Let us continue um, to love God with all our hearts and love our neighbors as ourselves, right? I mean, this is really the basics of it all. So uh, in this uh, edition of uh, Spilling the Tea, I'm going to be talking about um, our reconciliation service uh, this coming Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday will be Ronnie Lund's uh, last uh, formation series. That's uh, Wednesday following the 7 p.m. Mass. I'm going to be talking about a, a prayer walk, an ecumenical prayer walk on Good Friday. And um, uh, then I'm going to go out for a little bit of a walk and, uh, and put in context uh, or to show you uh, a little bit about our vision is to be a beacon of hope and love here in the, the neighborhood in which we're planted, all the way from Armdale uh, out to the Pennants, right? So um, uh, I'm going to show you one small little way in which we uh, are striving to uh, achieving that vision. So first off, back to uh, uh, Reconciliation Tuesday. Tuesday at 7 p.m., we're going to have a program here. I'm really excited about it. Our, uh, our new coordinator of uh, youth and young adult ministry, James Pereira, is going to be leading us uh, along with a couple of people he's asked to give their testimonies. A, um, a prayerful walk into the merciful heart of our, lovingly, our loving Heavenly Father. And so there will also be uh, three priests available to hear confessions. Um, so that's our our uh, Lenten Reconciliation evening, Tuesday, April the 5th at 7 p.m. And um, the uh, uh, confessions will go for as long as required starting uh, during that program. I already mentioned Ronnie Lunn, Wednesday after the 7 p.m. Mass. Come on out. This is his last uh, session in this uh, formation process through Lent. Uh, he's going to be discussing the topic of God is moving. Um, as for the prayer walk, uh, put it in your calendar, please. Uh, an ecumenical prayer walk will be meeting at um, Emmanuel Anglican Church on Good Friday at uh, 9.30 in the morning. I, um, I, hope, I hope you can come out and join us. All right, why don't we, uh, why don't we go for a little walk and uh, start talking about some ideas that are gelling around our vision of being a beacon of hope and love. All right, dear friends, so we're, we're mobile here. This is my first time with Spilling the TV in mobile. Uh, and um, as you know, I'm, I'm, uh, these two shelters behind me have uh, garnered a lot of attention and I would say a lot of goodwill uh, when many people are really struggling uh, with their Catholic identity and the Catholic Church. Um, so uh, our vision as a parish is to be a beacon of hope and love for uh, our entire parish, which of course goes from Ermdale out to uh, out to the Pennants. Um, the, the, the shelters are part of that strategy of being a beacon of hope and love because part of being Christian is how we serve um, the world in which we are planted, how we serve the community in which we reside. So uh, this is all part of it. Now let's let's take a look inside because I'll, I'll be speaking about uh, the new shower that's installed and a new hire that we have, Bradley Van Dam, who is coming on board as the coordinator of community care and how this all ties together. So let's go have a look. And so 
so this is Peter, who lives here in 3A, and I can't tell you what a joy it has been <laughs> to get to know Peter. It has been a joy to be here. Yeah, yeah. so we're, you, I mean, you're, you're a blessing to us, man. We're really, really uh, happy that you're here. Um, Peter, uh, I've totally put you on the spot here. You just walked <laughs> Yeah. How's the stay going? It's good. Good day. Beautiful. Beautiful out here, man. Yeah. It really is. You feel comfortable there? Yeah, very comfortable. Um, I'll be honest, I mean, it's hard to go from where I am to being in a place like this and not feel a little uncomfortable. But, you know, it's the people here that makes it so much nicer. It's awesome. You know, so you it's, feel it's well supported here. Oh, it's, that's what it's about. I mean, the shelter is one thing. It, it, it keeps us warm and dry. But we also lack so much. You know, it's a, a family kind of area thing, like, you know what I mean? Like, that you guys have provided here more so than the shelter. You know, it so kept you me warm, but you gave me so much more. Wow. You know, so you, know. you just used the word family there. So well, you mean you, you feel embraced by the community? Oh yeah. In a way that makes you feel like you belong to a family. Yeah, so, you know, it's something we all look for. Yeah. You know, um, we, we we all have family, but yeah. at the same time we feel alone. You know, especially when you're in this kind of position. And Oh yeah, this is nice, but what you guys gave me is so much more nice. And that's the truth of it. Peter. So if I can say anything, it's just thank you guys yeah. for all you've done. Yeah. You know, for you standing there holding that camera. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Peter, it's, you it's know. the way it works, right? Yeah. You know, you it's, um, it's, uh, it's such a blessing in ministry. I said this last week when I interviewed uh, Teresa about uh, her ministry to people in seniors' homes. And when we think we're giving, we actually receive more than we offer. I mean, that's just yeah. the economy of grace, oh, right? Yeah. 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 Peter, I got, well, I got one thing for you. Toronto Maple Leafs, really? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot. <laughs> God bless you, my brother. Thanks, Thanks for this. very much. Yeah, okay. okay, so um, I mentioned uh, Bradley Van, Van Dam. He's going to start with us on the 1st of May as our coordinator of community care. And so keep in mind, as I described back in November at our town hall, this is a position that is uh, going to help care for us as a community, a position that is a coordinator to help us uh, raise up caregivers in our own community so we can care for one another. So basically, those who are already part of the worshiping congregation, we can help each other out a little bit better. That's one component of this job. Uh, the next component is looking out. How do we care for uh, the community in which we're planted? Part of that, as I mentioned, is our outreach initiatives. And one of them, let's, let's walk around the corner. We've just had a shower installed. Here we are at St. Michael's Hall. Uh, so this, this shower, and it's got a, a sink here as well. We're about to have a mirror and some um, some towel bars and everything put up. But it will uh, it will allow us to transform this space. Um, hopefully, a few days a week. But let's start small. In the fall of 2022, I hope that the people who don't have a warm place to go know that they can come here on certain days of the week at certain times, let me just arbitrarily say from noon to 3 p.m. on Wednesdays, they know they can come here for a hot cup of coffee or tea, a bowl of soup, a sandwich, um, have a game of cards. We've got a ping pong table over there. We've got a 75 inch TV. Maybe we could uh, play uh, movies and like, just a safe place, a warm place where people who, uh, need a warm place to go and the cold winter days will come. So this is again part of us reaching out into the community so that we can say not only in word but in deed that we are indeed a beacon of hope and love.